Growing up in the sports-oriented culture of Australia, I often felt that my value as a male was ultimately tied to my athletic prowess. This link between male self-worth and how one performs on the sports field is really a form of toxic masculinity. Today, I want to talk about how this toxic masculinity feeds into gay shame. Where it came to sports, I had next to no physical coordination skills. And this was on the account of me having Asperger's syndrome. My late diagnosis at age 26 was liberating in that it offered an explanation for something I'd struggled with for so long. It allowed me to start shrugging off the belief that I was somehow deficient in masculinity, that I was inferior. This belief wasn't helped by negative social perceptions about being gay. As my confidence grew, I decided I'd start taking up sports again and in a way, it became this brass ring by which I could finally prove my self-value. And this led me to join an LGBTQ plus recreational dodgeball league. Going into it, I knew I was a lousy aim and an easy mark. But I was committed all the same to one season of play. My experience was mixed. Some of the longtime players were really supportive, but at the same time, I felt this weird undercurrent of judgmentalism. It was like many players were carrying on the same narrative I mentioned about equating athletic performance with worthiness. During childhood games, I often experienced exclusion, and I saw a lot of these behaviors also showing up on the dodgeball court. For example, people would ignore friendly hellos, or they would close ranks when you approach them. Some of my fellow team members were really competitive and would yell at me when I failed to catch a ball. And I even had one teammate shove me out of the way for no other reason than I was blocking his view. I also noticed that many players would cheat, refusing to take their outs. And this would sometimes lead to abusive shouting matches. Yes, this may be par for the course with many competitive sports, but an LGBTQ plus league was the last place I ever hoped to experience this kind of toxic masculinity. I think it's fair to assume that many of us were there because we either didn't identify with or feel completely safe being part of a heterosexual dodgeball league. In heterosexual spaces, gay men experience exclusion and bullying on the basis of their identity. So why on earth would they then want to inflict the same behavior on their fellows. To understand this, it's important to look at historical perceptions of the gay identity. In the past, and in some settings today, society treats homosexuality as a despicable choice, a weakness of character, or a moral flaw. This hostility towards gay boys and men forces us into hiding this part of our identity. We do this by suppressing traditionally feminine traits like emotional vulnerability. Basically, we try to make ourselves more acceptable to others by internalizing their contempt. And the result is shame. After coming out, we may wrap ourselves in the flag of self-acceptance, but often there is still a lot of reflection and healing to be done. Until this has been accomplished, shame lives on in secrecy, silence, and self-judgment. Eventually, it may emerge in the form of contempt towards others. This is how gay men who were once oppressed find themselves oppressing others, fueling a cycle of shame. So, rather than empowering and uplifting each other, we treat our fellow gay men in the same way we were once treated. We create a toxic social environment that is defined by judgment and exclusion. The behavior I experienced on the dodgeball court was a far cry from the kindness I think all of us crave, especially when we have once been marginalized. Many times I considered quitting the league. I was concerned that if I stayed, I might retaliate or adopt some of these behaviors as a defense mechanism. I couldn't possibly stop other players from inflicting their internalized shame upon others. 
But what helped me survive was the realization that I could take better care of myself. Through self-reflection, I was eventually able to put a name to what I was experiencing. I understood how and why it was triggering my fear of being inadequate. I also understood that I didn't need to cast this situation in black and white terms. I didn't have to harden into self-righteous anger, and I didn't have to flee from this perceived threat. Instead, when I felt my own shame scripts were being activated by other players' behavior, I could be present with my feelings and validate them. Once I had a handle on my emotions, I tried my best to bring kindness and humor to each match. When I blundered during the game, I didn't criticize myself as I'd once done. Instead, I tried to laugh it off. When other players behaved in hostile and otherwise outrageous ways, I gently poked fun at them. I also tried to encourage my fellow teammates. And as it turned out, I wasn't the only one feeling put off by the on-court aggression. This actually became a bonding experience for some of us. I remained in the league for another six months until an injury took me out of the game. I can't say that I mastered the sport during this period, nor can I say that I overcame my own shame demons. What I learned, however, is that I had the power to break the cycle of gay shame. I didn't need to play the role of oppressor and nor did I have to play victim. If you enjoyed this video, check out my blog post or any of the other links listed below. And please remember to like, hit the bell icon, and subscribe.